Okay, so what I'd like to do this week and then the next time we meet is go into a little bit more detail about some of the techniques that underlie some of these sub-movements within post-impressionism and neo-impressionism. So this week we're looking at one of the earlier paintings from the French neo-impressionist Georges Seurat, and that is, of course, his very famous Bathers at Anier. So this is an industrial area. We can see the factories that are, that are in the background, but it's one of the the many bathing beaches that existed along alongside the River Seine. And these are probably then young factory workers that are just taking a break from their jobs. And that's significant because in the past, when we saw the word bather in, in a painting's title, you know, we're expecting some sort of sumptuous nude woman dipping her toes into the water, and instead we have a bunch of average Joe sweaty Parisian laborers here. And I'm going to get into the the sort of social class commentary that underlies this painting a little bit more at the end, but I just want to kind of give you that to think about as we discuss some of the aesthetic features of the painting. There's something interesting about the way that Seurat has painted these men relative to their landscape. These figures look rigid in a way, but at the same time they're not, they're not rectilinear, they're sort of, they're curvy. And the geometry in general of, of most of the objects that we see in this painting, it looks a little bit too deliberately sketched out. Look at the roundedness of these caps. Here and here. And that sort of reflects this arched quality that Seurat has given each of these men. And in a way, it forms a kind of structural motif. So we, you know, we see it here, and then we see it again here, that maybe gives some, some depth to the canvas. But beyond that, we also see it in a lot of the, the scenery. So the trees form these, either they have these triangular shapes like we see over here and here, or they have these very rounded off teardrop shapes. Everything looks a little bit too geometrically perfect. It's even especially, look at this man here in the foreground. Look at how rounded his hips are. He almost looks like a, a woman, right, if you didn't look at his face. So this roundedness, together with some kind of fuzzy, f fuzzy, fuzzy, fuzzy brushwork uh, contributes to a, a very important quality that we see in this image, and that's that everything looks just sort of out of focus. Look at, look at the men's faces, for instance, or look at some of the trees. See how fuzzy they look around the edges? They seem really blurry. And what that does is it gives the effect or the impression, I think, of a very stifling heat. So imagine like a, a mirage on a desert road. Right, the kind of like it looks like the air is sort of wavy or blurry right above the of, above the ground, and how we associate that blurriness with just blistering heat. So what Seurat has done here, based on these kind of rounded off objects, the in this sort of blurry, fuzzy geometry that he gives all of these different objects, is that he's used this aesthetic technique to to tell us that this is a very hot summer day. Okay, but there's there's something more that catches our eyes here, and I think that's the remarkable stillness and sort of the calm, the isolation that we see amongst these different figures relative to their, to their landscapes. They each sort of seem to be absorbed with their own thoughts, okay? And they also seem very isolated from one another, particularly this guy in the middle here, right, who sort of forms the the uh, the sinusure, the sort of focal point of the, I, sh I shouldn't say focal point, he forms sort of the, the centerpiece of the image, that he seems very disconnected from everything around him. And what is it that gives this canvas that quality of s sort of stillness or just absolute calm? What what I think the answer is here is that it's, it's the pointillist technique and it's sort of very nascent stages of development. So I want to be clear, this is not, we usually associate Seurat with, with pointillism, Right, the little pixelated dots, um, but this is not really an example of that. The, the technique that Seurat has used here, he described as um, balayé, or this sort of a swept technique, because that's how that translates. But the idea here in terms of optical theory and color theory is, is basically the same, and that in either the balayé or pointillism, the painter is applying pigments, or you know the flat crisscrossed brush strokes in this case, of, of complementary colors, in such a way that those different colors will additively mix and when we see them from a distance and our eyes sort of put together the different colors to create a composite image. And what it does is it gives the artist m a lot more control over the color tones that are used in his work. 
So even though this is an, an explicit example of quantalism, we can see how Seurat is sort of beginning to develop that method. And in fact, three years after he finished this, so this he finished he finished painting this in um, 18, 1884. He was only I think he was only 24 when he finished painting this. Three years later, in in 1887, he actually added some little orange dots. I don't think you can see them here, but along in the in the grass here on the shore to kind of give it a more quantalist retouch, I guess you could say. Okay, so the, the last thing that I want to talk about here, and the thing that I always saw when I when I first looked at this painting was what what this guy here is doing. I used to think that he was maybe taking a drink of water, but what I've sort of come to believe, I guess at this point, is that what he's actually doing is he's maybe he's calling out, right, to the to something or someone on the other on the other side of the river. And what's interesting here that you might not know is that this land that we see over here is La Grande, La Grande Jatte, okay, which is the, the really probably the more famous Seurat painting, the Sunday afternoon on the island of La Grande Jatte. And that's the, the very quintessentially pointillist painting by Seurat. So there's the possibility, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, of a, of a class commentary that underlies this image. We have the lower class kind of young factory worker calling out to the to the upper class, upper middle class, bourgeois members of Parisian society that would have preferred to spend their, their leisure time on the much more fashionable uh, island of La Grande Jatte. If you haven't, if you don't know what that painting is or you, you want to learn more about that, I would encourage you to click on the link here and, and watch my more detailed analysis of that and talk a little bit more about pointillism in particular. Okay, so next time we meet we're going to talk about Paul Signac also a French artist, also a neo-impressionist, but instead of this pointillist technique, he develops a different sort of style called divisionism. So we'll see you then.